G'day guys, it's Wolfie here and welcome back to the pack. So today I'm going to share a tune with you guys for the Jaguar XJR9 which is currently available in the Legends dealership. Um, I've never actually shared a tune for this car before but I've been using it for quite a while. It used to be one of my go-tos for the Sardinia grind so today I'm going to share that with you guys and uh, with the uh, update 1.4 literally about to drop in a number of hours um, we've also got a WTC 900 event finally coming for Le Mans. So uh, I've uh, yeah I've been doing that one for quite a while. It's uh, it's one that I actually kind of do the lobbies with with mates. So hopefully that's a decent payer. Um, and at the end of the video, I will leave you um, a bit of a tune screen with uh, with my tune for the 900 in case anyone wants to give it a rip on that when it drops. But uh, yeah, be sure to like and subscribe and uh, let's get stuck in. Okay, so the XJR9 is currently available at the Legends dealership, so from the Haggerty dealership. And uh, it's this one right here and is going for 3 million currently. Um, now this is actually the car that uh, I got the engine from for my XJ220 swap, which was an absolutely phenomenal swap. Um, but in this case, we're going to be using it in its original form in the car that it came in. Um, it's an absolute legendary car um, and did really well, um, especially at Le Mans. Um, but we're going to be using it today for the Sardinia WTC 800 grind. And um, yeah, look, this thing, you can it's probably about as fast as any of the uh, top Sardinia grind cars. So the 787B or uh, even the RCP, the uh, Nissan Grip 1. So at 3 million credits, I think it's definitely value for your money. Um, and it's one of those cars that you just, you want to buy from a collector's standpoint. Um, but as you can see there, it's also a Group 1 car. So, you know, it's a great car to have for the collection, but also a great car to race uh, both in single and multiplayer. Now you'll notice that there's uh, no changes externally to make on this car. So I'm using the standard wheels, um, standard size, standard rim width, standard offset. That's all standard and there's also no custom parts or racing items to put on it. Um, so you're basically just buying the car and then you're buying your performance parts and those performance parts are reasonably few um, and I'll show you all those on this tuning sheet. So as you can see here we have 799.95 performance points and 789 brake horsepower. So it's extremely powerful and the fuel, you know, doesn't fly through the fuel um, because it's a Group 1 car. Uh, amazing torque, um, only weighs 920 kilos, has a front to rear weight balance of 41 to 59, which is awesome, that's kind of what you want, in, especially in an MR car. Uh, acceleration performance is really, really good on this thing. Uh, same can be said for the stability. And the rotational Gs, they start to creep up there a little bit as you, as you reach some of the top speeds and stuff, so you do need to be aware of uh, understeer especially with the large amount of rear downforce when you get up to those really really high speeds so you might have to modulate your acceleration when you're at really high speeds going through high speed corners uh, as you can see here we've done the wolfy spec i'm calling it um, so racing mediums at the front racing soft at the rear now this is going to be entirely up to you guys if you want to use the softs on the rear um, you'll see that if i put uh, racing mediums on front and rear you've got pretty much the same performance points. So almost identical there. Um, so that's entirely gonna be up to you guys. I prefer to put the softs on the rear and deal with the wear because I find it's, one, it's quicker. Um, so the car is actually faster off the mark. You will have quite a bit of wear by the time you finish your first stint of seven laps, but I find that it's still just as grippy as having mediums um, and it's a little bit faster. Uh, the fully customizable suspension comes stock with this car and we have a front body height adjustment of 62 and rear of 83. So a bit of rake effect there, that's just going to help us with stability and stuff. Um, and for our anti-roll bar, we've set it to 7 at the front and 9 at the rear. Dampening ratio compression is set to 22 at the front and 28 at the rear. Expansion to 42 at the front and 45 at the rear. Natural frequency set to 3.85 at the front and 4.40 at the rear. Negative camber angle to 3.2 at the front and 1.2 at the rear. So only a little bit of negative camber angle there for the rear and that's just gonna help us to not wear those rear tires out too much. 
Uh, toe angle, we've got none on the front and just a tiny bit on the rear, so 0 0.03 at the rear, once again to help us cut back that uh, that tire wear on the rear tires. Um, as far as the differential is concerned, so we've got a whole lot of slip here. Initial torque is set to 5 and acceleration sensitivity to 10 and our braking sensitivity is also set to 10 so that's just going to help us that you know there's a lot of slip there so it's going to help us when we're cornering and stuff uh, it's going to help us to not spin out too much our downforce at the front is set to 504 and at the rear is set to 1598 now so it's quite a bit um, at the rear uh, but thankfully being a group one car this car's sort of set up for um, large amounts of downforce um, you will have the front wheels suffer a little bit. As I was saying, you'll get a little bit of understeer in those really high speed corners, but thankfully they're pretty few in this particular race. So we've got the fully customizable ECU and the output set to 100%. We've got 26 kilos of ballast and we've positioned that ever so slightly forward at minus two. Our power restrictor, so that's one thing you will also have to buy, is set to 80%. Our fully customizable racing transmission, another thing you'll need to buy. Uh, I've set initially to 380 kilometers per hour, um, but then what I've done is I've actually shortened the ratios on this, so I've made them a bit closer together. So you'll need to set your final gear to 3.600, as seen here, and then just head down through your gears basically and just adjust these numbers. So what I've done is I've stretched out one, two, and I think three maybe three and then four and five just brought them back into line so yeah just go through those gears and copy those numbers down and it should be set up perfectly for this event and uh, yeah it also actually works pretty well uh, for uh, the spa WTC 800 and um, as you'll see I made a couple of changes for the uh, new Le Mans WTC 900 event that's coming up today uh, it's coming out with update 1.44, so stay tuned for that at the end of the video. But yeah, just copy down those numbers and it should be right. So as you can see here, we have the high RPM turbocharger. And uh, yeah, that's it, this thing's got a lot of go, uh, especially if you can get on the gas nice and early. Um, the boost on it's phenomenal, uh, as is with a lot of these Group C cars that we turbocharge. And so as you can see there, there's nothing else really to grab uh, other than, I always grab the handbrake, but uh, I'm sure a lot of people don't really use it. I only really use it if I get into trouble and I need to spin the car around quickly. The brake balance you'll notice I've set all the way forward. So I'm doing that for the first stint, just to make sure that I cut back on my rear tire wear. Uh, so just for my first stint of seven laps, and then after I pit, put on a new fresh set of uh, racing mediums, I'm gonna then push it to the back maybe to one or two um, just to help me with rotation and stuff because I won't be quite as worried about tire wear at that stage and other than that there's nothing else to put on so that's going to be everything that we need and everything you need to buy is uh, yeah is obvious there on this tuning sheet and of course we'll be headed to world circuits and then to Europe and over to Sardinia Road Track, this one here. And we'll be going in the Sardinia WTC 800 event. And as you can see there, I'm using the softs at the rear, but it's totally up to you guys as I was saying. You can use mediums, front and rear if you want. Now, as far as the race is concerned, I'm not gonna go into it too much, but um, I'll just show you some notables. Um, as you can see, it takes off super fast. So what I'm doing for this first stint is I'm just leaving it in fuel map one and uh, trying to get myself out ahead of the pack as quick as possible. Um, so, you know, you can pretty much rev it. It's probably, you're probably best off revving this thing to just shy of the limiter. So just before it starts to blink on your screen there. Um, I was probably revving it out a little bit too hard, but I was just basically going for uh, as quick a lap as I could, um, but quite honestly, uh, sub 1 minute 29 laps, uh, you know, pretty easy in this, or sub 1 minute 30 laps, so faster than a minute and a half per lap consistently is, it's quite easily doable, um, especially in this first stint, and I find especially with the softs on the rear, um, it just makes it really easy at the start to get around these guys, you've got more grip than them, you've got more power than them, 
um, but yeah I would advise uh, you know using second or third for corner exits you don't really want to be using first uh, it's just there's way too much torque and it's way too easy to spin so um, yeah I was just trying to get out ahead of the pack as quick as possible for these first say two laps and so we'd knock over that first one in 1 minute 35 and then just go about the business of trying to get ahead of the next what was it three cars or so um, and basically by the time we come through to the last couple of corners of lap two we're already in the first place and this is where you can just absolutely scoot away um, with clean air in front of you um, yeah it's just a couple of corners like this one here where you want to sort of let off a little bit um, because of that uh, power over understeer I was talking about um, but yeah I'll give you a quick rundown of one of my fastest laps so as you can see we're already into the 1 minute 29s um, for lap 3 um, yeah you know like pretty heavy braking zones probably three of them I think um, and then the rest uh, all reasonably light um, and it actually handles really well through a lot of the corners it's just those really high speed ones um, where you're gonna suffer a little bit of power understeer and one of those is coming up and I'll show you which one I'm talking about but as I was saying you kind of want to be exiting out of corners I choose to use sort of second here uh, you might want to use third it's up to you uh, depending on what you're more comfortable with but this corner up here is another one where uh, I might suggest if you're around traffic maybe giving a little bit of a lift just to help yourself from hit that wall there um, but yeah I mean you don't even really have to brake too early in this car um, I'm using quite a bit of engine braking as well um, just to try and get those really quick laps in um, I was just seeing how fast I can go and you know 1 minute 29s were quite easily doable um, with this tune and uh, I wasn't far off 1 minute 28s I'm sure a lot of you guys are going to be able to do 128s um, but it's not just a matter of doing a 128 you can do them quite consistently especially in this first stint and uh, yeah so you'll see also in my second stint even with the mediums on uh, 129s are quite doable um, so you're quite easily going to do uh, under 23 and a half minutes um, for this race if you can do those sort of times uh, and you know I'm sure some of you quick guys out there are probably going to get close to 23 minutes flat you know um, that would be a pretty tall order but um, I've seen how quick some of you guys are so hopefully um, yeah we'll put another challenge out anyone that can get as close as possible to the 23 minute mark and I would get caught up behind uh, some back markers and stuff here uh, as you'll see um, so they'd slow me down a little bit as I was trying to chase those uh, last couple of uh, quick laps before pitting um, which is why I always suggest putting it on difficulty hard or medium um, because when you've got it on difficulty easy they're just so slow you end up lapping them more times than you would if you had it on hard or medium but regardless we'd head in after lap 7 as you can see the tyre wears you know it's pretty heavy uh, but it's not uncontrollable or anything like that and we put on a fresh set of mediums front and rear and we'd fill up the tank and this time we just want to be a little bit careful of our fuel so initially I just turned down my um, fuel map down to six just for a little while for a lap or two um, and then ran around on like fuel map two fuel map one um, for the next couple of laps um, and just basically drummed away at it as you can see that's quite easy to get uh, one minute 29 laps uh, even on that second stint um, and even with mediums on front and rear now I did push a little bit hard here just getting frustrated by back markers and stuff and uh, lost control um, so just be aware with those mediums if you are using the softs the softs are still quite a bit stickier uh, quite a bit grippier than the mediums even when they're worn um, so yeah I just I got caught out by it then but still managed to uh, exact my revenge no seriously I so I still managed to knock over the race um, in under 23 and a half minutes so you know 23 and a half minutes just with those couple of mess ups uh, fastest lap was like 1 minute 29.2 I think or something like that and we'd still get of course the coveted clean race bonus so there you go guys I hope you like that one um, be sure to like and subscribe and uh, go out there and make a mint 
Um, it's a great tune, a great car. Um, I, I like all these sort of Group C cars for this event. Um, and uh, I, with this tune, I think this car is actually it's probably comparable to uh, the other big two, being the 787B and the uh, Nissan RCP. Um, but uh, yeah, look, uh, I hope you guys like it. Um, if you do, be sure to uh, leave me a comment, let me know how you go. And um, yeah. I'll, uh, I'll leave you guys with my tune for the 900 uh, PP event. Um, so I actually ran it at Le Mans. Um, so yeah, you guys might want to just try it out when this new race drops uh, in a couple of hours from now. But until next time guys, take care. Bye.